Right, so picture this. You're at the Osaka Kansai Expo, April 6th, 2025. Future tech everywhere. Baza. Right, and yeah. suddenly Kawasaki unveils this thing. It's like straight out of science fiction. I'm talking about the Corleo. Robot Zoid. Yeah, a yeah. robot Zoid, this four legged hydrogen powered <laughs> machine. Okay. It's like the completely reimagined personal mobility. And from the sources you sent me, it's obvious why this thing caught your eye. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you see right away how they're bringing together all these different innovations, robotics, sustainable energy, and they're really tapping into that shared kind of cultural imagination, you know, yeah. sci-fi stuff. Exactly. And so in this deep dive, what we want to do is get into the nuts and bolts, the why, the how of the Corleo, look at where the inspiration came from, how it's supposed to actually work, what they could potentially use it for, and the tech hurdles Kawasaki's got to clear to make this 2050 vision a reality. And, you know, Kawasaki's no stranger to pushing the boundaries. I mean, they're a big deal in motorcycles, the Ninja series, legendary, right? Yeah. But they're also in industrial robots. Yeah. Aerospace. They've got this history of not just keeping up with innovation, but like trying to redefine what's possible. And what's really interesting is how you can see them drawing on all that experience. Mm. You know, the agility and the design of their motorcycles, the precision of their robotics, and even maybe some of those high-tech materials they use in aerospace. It's all kind of coming together in this one concept. So let's start with the why, why build a four-legged hydrogen-powered well thing. Yeah. The stuff you gave me says Corleo is very much a concept model. They're looking ahead to 2050, which fits perfectly with the Expo's theme, Impulse to Move. Kawasaki is showing us their take on where personal mobility could be going. And you got to connect this to the bigger picture. That 2050 time frame is huge. A lot of people think that's when we'll see major changes in how we use energy, how we get around. So this isn't just some flashy prototype. Kawasaki saying, hey, we're going to be a part of that future. Right. And what about the inspiration for this thing? It's a pretty wild mix. The grace and the movement of four-legged animals like horses, dogs. They even mentioned panthers in the source. Right. Right. Combined with Kawasaki's sleek motorcycle styling. But here's where it gets really cool for me. Mm. There's this undeniable science fiction vibe. I'm thinking Zoids, those mechanical beasts from anime or the robots from Horizon Zero Dawn. Like they took these crazy creative concepts and said, okay, how do we actually build something like that? And that's such a key point. You know, imagination plays a big role in driving innovation sometimes. Those far out ideas from science fiction. They can be like a guiding light for engineers and designers. You know, they push them to think outside the box. So that robot Zoid label, it's not just marketing. It's giving you a peek into the creative minds behind this project. But it's not all just fantasy come to life, right? Your sources make it clear that beyond the cool looks, there are real practical goals. Sustainable transportation, obviously. Yeah, of course. But also being able to get to these really tough, uneven places where a normal wheeled vehicle just can't go. Exactly. I mean, the looks definitely grab your attention, but when you get down to it, the way it's supposed to work is all about solving real problems. How do we move people and stuff across rough landscapes in a way that's both effective and good for the environment? Coralia is like, hey, here's a possible answer. Okay. Well, so let's talk power source hydrogen. Yeah. Kawasaki's gone with a 150cc hydrogen engine, and the info you sent really highlights their commitment to clean energy. Yeah. The bold move, especially with battery electric vehicles being so dominant right now. And that choice is super interesting to think about hydrogen power. It's got some serious advantages when it's produced sustainably. It's a true zero emission fuel. The only thing that comes out is water vapor. And if we compare that to battery electric vehicles for a second, your sources kind of point out the resource intensive nature of lithium mining without getting too deep into the weeds. But it suggests Kawasaki is thinking about a bigger picture of sustainability. Right. That image of water vapor coming out of the exhaust is pretty striking. Yeah. So we've got the hydrogen, how does that actually make this robot Zoid move? Mm -hmm. Let's get into the design and mechanics. Huh. Visually, it's sleek, angular. They're using lightweight metal and carbon composites. Yeah. You could definitely see that Kawasaki design influence that sharp, kind of aggressive look of their motorcycles. And mm -hmm. for those who might not know, carbon composites are super strong, but really light, crucial for making a machine like this both agile and tough. Yeah, those materials are absolutely key. You want to make a four-legged vehicle that's actually practical. It can't be too heavy, but it's got to be strong and durable, especially if you're talking about going over rough terrain, carbon composites, lightweight metals. That's how you strike that balance. But the star of the show, visually and functionally, has got to be those four independently moving robotic legs. Yeah. That's what gives Corleo that animal-like agility. 
your source is explaining that each leg has its own electric motor, and that hydrogen engine we talked about that acts as a generator, it's supplying the power to those legs. And that distributed power system that's really important, it gives them super precise control over each leg, which is a must for navigating uneven ground and staying stable. Think about how a cat moves its paws to get through all sorts of crazy environments. Corleo wants that same level of adaptability and control. And the list of trains it can handle is impressive. Grass, gravel rocks, yeah, snow mud. Your sources list them all. It sounds like they built this thing to go anywhere. And then there are the little design touches, the rubber hooves for grip makes total sense. Yeah. And the way each leg can move on its own, the rear legs, they're designed for shock absorption. Yeah. The front legs are focused on balance. They clearly put a lot of thought into how animals move. You're absolutely right. They're using biomimicry, which is basically imitating nature's designs to solve engineering problems. Yeah. And you can see that in how they engineered the legs to adapt and respond to different terrains the way those legs move independently. That's crucial for stability. If one leg slips, the others can adjust almost instantly to keep you upright. Okay, now here's where it gets really cool. The control system, forget your steering wheel. Your sources describe it as a body movement control system. Sure. Lean forward to go faster. Lean back to slow down, shift your weight side to side, to turn. It's like riding a horse. That's so innovative. And what's really neat is how intuitive they're trying to make it by using the rider's body as the main way to control the machine. They're aiming for a much more natural and direct connection. It's less about pushing buttons and more about feeling the terrain and reacting to it. And there are sensors in the foot pegs and handlebars. They take those subtle shifts in your weight and posture and turn them into commands for the legs. It sounds super seamless and responsive. Plus, they've got adjustable stirrups, you know, for comfort and to help you find that sweet spot for control. Mm -hmm. They've really thought about the human element here. That adjustability is important because it shows they want to make this tech accessible to a wider range of people if the controls feel natural and comfortable. It's easier to learn how to use it, less intimidating for someone who's never ridden anything like this before. So imagine you're out there on some crazy terrain. You're leaning into a turn. What kind of info do you have? Well, your sources talk about a heads-up display, a HUD built right into that front shield. Okay. You'd have real-time data hydrogen levels, navigation, weight distribution, even analysis of the terrain coming up all right there in your line of sight. That's crucial. When you're navigating tough environments, you need to constantly know how the vehicle is doing and what's coming up ahead. And a HUD lets you do that without taking your eyes off the path. And what about riding at night? They've got that covered too. The system can project path markers onto the ground in front of you, like having your own virtual guide lights. And then there's the AI. Your sources describe the symbiotic relationship between what you're doing as the rider and the AI that's built in. It's not just reacting to your commands, it's learning your riding style and adapting to the environment on the fly. That's where the robotics get really sophisticated. Mm. The AI is constantly taking in data from sensors, maybe LiDAR, to map the surroundings, tactile feedback from the legs. It's predicting changes in the terrain and adjusting how the legs move to keep you stable and optimize performance. It's like a partnership between you and the machine making the whole ride smoother and safer. We touched on the hydrogen powertrain earlier, but let's go back to the specifics of that 150cc engine. It's at the rear, along with a hydrogen fuel canister. Hmm. Your sources don't give us exact numbers on range or refueling time, which makes sense for a concept model. Sure. But they do keep coming back to that clean operation, water vapor only emission. And they're doing that on purpose. Yeah. It shows how committed Kawasaki is to sustainability, and it positions Corleo as a way to explore the outdoors responsibly with minimal impact on the environment. All right, so we've got this incredible machine, hydrogen-powered, four-legged marvel. What can you actually do with it? The potential uses they outline in the sources are pretty exciting. And adventure and recreation are the obvious ones, right? Imagine hitting those tough off-road trails, but no noise, no pollution like you get with ATVs. That's a huge, plus silent emission-free exploration. It changes the whole experience. You're much more connected to nature. But it goes beyond just fun weekends. Search and rescue really stands out. Imagine getting into disaster zones, mm. earthquakes, floods, wildfires, places where wheeled vehicles just can't go delivering supplies, reaching people in need. Corleo seems perfect for that. It could be a game changer for emergency response, being able to get to places that were impossible to reach before. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it produces almost no emissions would be a huge advantage in sensitive environments. And there's environmental research, too. Scientists needing to get to remote, delicate ecosystems without disturbing anything. The quiet operation, the minimal impact on the ground they mention in your sources could make Corleo incredibly useful for their work. Exactly. They could gather data, 
do their research with a much smaller environmental footprint, minimizing their impact on the very places they're studying. Okay, this next one's a little more speculative, but your sources do mention possible military applications, reconnaissance, logistics, kind of like other four-legged robots we've seen being developed. Mm. It's important to note, it, they just bring this up as a possibility. I'm not saying they support any specific military use. It makes sense, though, if you think about what the platform can do, the agility, the ability to handle tough terrain. Those could be valuable in a military context, but yeah, it's still very much in the realm of possibility, not something they're actively pursuing right now. And this last one, this one really got to me, the inclusive mobility. They suggest that the control system, because it's so intuitive, could be adapted for people with physical disabilities, opening up off-road adventure to a whole new group of people. That's a powerful idea. It shows how versatile the design is by focusing on natural body movements for control. It opens up possibilities for people who might not be able to use traditional vehicle controls. So yeah, it could really expand access to these unique experiences. Okay, so maybe the future is four-legged and hydrogen powered. Right. But what are the big challenges in actually getting Corleo ready for prime time by 2050? Your sources point out some pretty serious tech hurdles. Material science is a big one, right? Making those robotic legs super light and super tough. For sure. The legs are going to have to handle a lot of stress and impact, but they can't weigh the vehicle down. So we need advancements in lightweight, high strength materials and some innovative designs to make that happen. And the hydrogen powertrain itself, scaling that up for mass production, finding better ways to store the hydrogen. Mm. Your sources mentioned needing denser, lighter storage solutions. Yeah. And of course, the whole refueling infrastructure needs a major overhaul. Yeah. You can't just pull up to any gas station and fill up with hydrogen right now. That's a big one. The lack of a widespread hydrogen refueling network is a major roadblock for any hydrogen-powered vehicle. Kawasaki would probably have to team up with energy companies to develop that infrastructure along with the vehicle itself. And then there's the AI analyzing the terrain in real time, adapting to unpredictable off-road conditions. That sounds like a massive computing challenge. It requires some serious processing power and super smart algorithms that can handle tons of data in real time make split-second decisions to keep the rider safe and optimize performance, all while the environment is constantly changing. And we can't forget about the cost. Something this complex is going to be expensive. Your sources admit that bringing the price down will be key to making it even remotely affordable for the average person. Yeah, that initial price tag is going to be a barrier for most people. It'll probably start out in niche applications, and then as the tech improves and they produce more of them, the cost could come down over time. Now let's zoom out a bit and look at Corleo in the context of the whole mobility landscape. Your sources talk about this blurring of lines between robotics and vehicles. They mention Tesla's Optimus robot and Hyundai's walking car concept. We're definitely seeing these different technologies merge. Robotics is moving beyond factories and becoming more and more a part of how we get around Corleo is a prime example of that. But what's really interesting is that Corleo seems to be all about that human writing experience, that feeling of having a companion for exploration. It's not just about the tech, it's about the connection you feel as the rider. Exactly. It's about the human machine interface. They're not just building a robot, they're building a partnership that enhances your experience, expands your capabilities when you're exploring new environments. Your source is also compared to other four legged robots out there, like Boston Dynamic Spot and MIT's Cheetah Corleo, seems to be going for this blend of practicality and emotional connection that robot zoid feeling we talked about right yeah spot is more like a multi-purpose platform for different tasks cheat is all about speed and agility but corleo it's trying to evoke that sense of adventure and companionship it's not just a tool it's a partner in exploration and that choice of hydrogen power it it also fits in with japan's overall energy strategy they're really focused on hydrogen as a fuel for the future that alignment with national policy could be huge. It could provide funding and support for research development and eventually getting hydrogen-powered vehicles like Corleo out there on the roads. And in a way, Corleo is kind of challenging how we think about transportation. Yeah. We went from riding animals to wheels, and now we might be going back to legs, but legs enhanced by all this incredible technology. It's like coming full circle, isn't it? Legs are naturally good for getting over rough terrain, and now with all these advancements in tech, we can take advantage of that in these totally new and exciting ways. Let's talk about all the buzz this thing is generating, that robot Zoid label. It's not just some random phrase they came up with. It taps into this fascination we've had with mechanical creatures for ages. Think Gundam, think Star Wars. That connection to pop culture is 
huge. Those fictional robots, they've captured our imaginations for decades. And Corleo, it's tapping into that same sense of wonder and possibility. And your sources specifically mention anime, gaming, science fiction, especially Zoids franchise. It's like a childhood dream come true for a lot of people. Yeah, for people who grew up with those stories, Corleo is this bridge between fantasy and reality. It shows how imaginative concepts can lead to real technological breakthroughs. And what about the initial reactions online? Your sources mention descriptions like sci-fi beast, brought to life, revolutionary ride. There's a, a ton of excitement mixed with some healthy skepticism, which makes sense for something this new and different. That's totally normal when you see a groundbreaking tech, people get excited about the possibilities, but they also have practical questions. Can this really work? How much will it cost? So looking ahead to 2050, your sources remind us that Corleo is still just a prototype. We don't have all the specs yet or a detailed timeline beyond that 2050 target. And it's worth pointing out that the prototype at the expo, it wasn't moving around. It was more of a display model, unlike those cool CGI videos we've seen. Right. That static display shows us that it's still early days for this concept. Those CGI videos give us a glimpse of what they're aiming for, but they've still got a lot of work to do in terms of engineering and refining the design. But your sources do suggest some possible steps along the way. Building more experimental prototypes, working with other companies to develop that hydrogen infrastructure, maybe even trying out hybrid designs with wheels and legs as a kind of a stepping stone. And then there's Kawasaki's track record. They're known for innovation. Yeah, given Kawasaki's history of pushing the limits, there's good reason to believe they can figure out how to overcome these challenges and make Corleo a reality. Those smaller steps, they make sense for a project this big and complex. Ultimately, your sources paint this picture of Corleo, not just changing how we get around, but how we experience nature, how we explore it. It's bigger than just transportation. It's about reimagining our relationship with the natural world and giving us new ways to access and experience it sustainably. So let's wrap this up for everyone. The Kawasaki Corleo a hydrogen-powered, four-legged robot Zoid unveiled at the Osaka Kansai Expo. It's a vision of what personal mobility could look like in the future, especially for those tough off-road environments. It combines animal-like movement, Kawasaki's sleek motorcycle-style intuitive body movement control, and a dedication to clean hydrogen power. And as we've discussed, it could be used for all sorts of things, exciting adventures, important search and rescue missions, crucial environmental research. And there's even the possibility of military applications in making it accessible for people with disabilities. And while there are definitely some big technological challenges to overcome before we see it in 2050, the whole concept is incredibly exciting. It really gets you thinking about what's possible in the future. Totally. The challenges are huge, but so is the potential impact. Corleo is a bold step forward in how we think about getting around and how we interact with the environment. And that brings us to our final thought for you to consider. How could this merging of robotics and sustainable energy so perfectly represented by Corleo, how could that change our relationship with the natural world and what other crazy ideas that seem like science fiction right now, what other things might become reality in the next few decades? It's definitely something to think about as we explore the future of mobility and the amazing power of human ingenuity. Yeah, absolutely.